at some point you will want to test your map in game uh, or run it on your server whatever you want to call it so we're just gonna go to file save as i'm going to save it as my map one save and that's it i'm then going to go to the my server folder that we made in the sixth installment of this uh, rust edit course and um, if you are not up to this point or you haven't seen that video go uh, watch that so we're going to open up ussr and once we got that open i'm going to go to custom map i'm going to change this to my map one and i'm going to leave the rest default but i have to change the map url to wherever my map is so i'm going to go to the folder where i saved my map file which for me is in my dropbox folder and i'm going to click on the little icon and then copy this path i'm going to paste that in here do another backspace and then type the name of the map so my map one dot map and i'm going to generate a start file um, you can just select it custom map and click start or you can go to file locations start file and then start the my map one and this should start up our server with our custom map there might be some yellow errors and stuff and messages just ignore those if they are red they are wrong um and when this is finished i'll uh, start up rust like normal and i'll see you in the lobby i'm gonna press f1 and type connect localhost colon 28015 so we spawned and this is the roller coaster by yetsti that i uh, used as inspiration and see how he did it and how he made it to then make my own roller coaster as you see over there so the map loaded up fine and uh let's see what happens when we make some changes and then try to load it again okay so i closed rust and i'm gonna close the server as well and i'm gonna start up rust edit again and make some changes to my map um delete this door over here and that's well, let's delete some more stuff and let's save it so it says successfully saved and we're gonna close it up again and since we saved it as the same name you can see that if i just start the file again it still points to the same file so it should work but you will see that when we test this in game that there will be a issue and i will connect to it when it's done and i will show you what the issue is so as you can see it's still there so what has happened during the startup the server checked if the map file was already generated and it was so it didn't recheck the map file so what we have to do is delete the folder before we start up the server and that way it will recheck the updated file and that way it will regenerate it with the changes we made but we will run into another error so i will show you what i mean so i'm not going to going to close rust i'm just going to disconnect and i'm going to alt tap out of it i'm going to close the server and i'm going to go to that folder and inside the rust server files we have our server folder or and inside there there should be a folder with the name that we filled in here on our server identity so if we delete that now it has to check that file again uh, because there is no generated map file already and it will update it with the changes that we did but like i said there will be a, another error coming up so once this is done same as before i'll see you in rust when it's done starting up and it's done so let's go back to rust and do the same connect thing and it will give us an error and you can see that it says the world file mismatch what this means is there is a map file in your client that is different from the one that is on the server since we made that change our client basically generated a map file for us so if you press f1 and click on log folder in the bottom right it should open up your explorer and you can see that under maps there is the my map one so what you could do is remove this and then it should work um, but the easiest fix and the one you should do when you're running a public server is make sure that every time you run a changed map or a updated map whatever you want to call it give it a unique name so give it like version 1 version 2 version 1.2 whatever you want to 
whatever version number you want to give it, of course, but just make sure it's a unique name. So what we're going to do, I'm going to close this. I'm going to go to my initial Dropbox folder. So that's this one. And this is our file, but this is the updated one. I'm going to give it a unique name. So I'm just going to change it to two. And what I would recommend is saving it as a unique name straight out of Rust Edit. So that way you have backups and copies of your map. With this unique name, I'm going to go back to the start file location and take the one for my map, right click, edit it. And I'm just going to change the one to a two. And I'll also give it a different identity. I could, of course, just delete the old folder like we just did. Delete this one, but instead I'll just let it create its own separate folder. Uh, I'm not going to rename this just for tutorial sake, but you probably want to change the name to a two just to keep everything named well and, and understandable. This way it should start with the changes we made and it should also allow us to connect. So again, when it's finished, I'll try to connect to it. So we are allowed to connect and now we just have to check if it's the updated version of the map. And is the change here? Yes, it is. So it's deleted. What I deleted, the door is gone. And it doesn't give us the world mismatch error. So that's basically that locally. The good thing about this is if you uh, basically, if you join a server, you have the map file as I just showed because it generates the same map file in your client. So you can just join the server and open the map file up in Rust Edit and change it yourself. So if you are still testing a new prefab or a custom monument or whatever custom map you don't want people to have your map and there are ways um, which i also have tutorials for to making a private server and you can still allow cer certain people your friends to join and also uh, check out the map but that's a little bit uh that's a little bit of configuration and not everybody wants to do this if you set it up locally, like I just did in the start file, so pointing directly to the map file on my hard disk, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, the start file here, it says level URL, and it points directly to my uh, map file on my hard disk. If I started this way, the server with this start file, it would not work for my friends because the server will send them, will tell them that there is a map file in their D Dropbox folder, which there won't be, so it won't work. So this way only works locally if you know exactly where the map file is, or if you have the map file on your computer. So if you want to have it working for other people, you have to upload that map file somewhere where you can directly link to it, and that way their Rust can tell them to basically when they try to connect, it will automatically download that map file for you or for them. And it will then generate the map file from that. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to close the server. There are several services you can use. Yeah, I use Dropbox, so I'm just going to start up my Dropbox. If I go to that folder in my Dropbox, the tutorial folder, there should be a green icon coming up. So these are already synced. I just have to wait for the my map version to also sync. You can see it's blue. Once this is done, I can generate a link and that is a direct download link. So what I, what I mean by that is if you go to that link, it has to start downloading the map automatically. There cannot be a download button or click next or click to download, whatever. It has to be a direct link. So we got the green icon. I'm going to right click on it and get Dropbox link. Yes. And I'm going to paste that in here. And with Dropbox, I have to change the zero to a one over here. It basically says in a default, it says download is zero or DL is zero. And you have to change that to DL is one. And if you now go to that link, the map file will start downloading automatically. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to rerun the server with the new map file location. And it should still work because we didn't make any changes to the map file. So even with that new link, the map file that is generated by it should be exactly the same. So it should still work with our client 
uh, map file that we already have generated. I can still use the local host because it's still running on my computer so I don't have to use the public IP just because I use a public link now for the level URL and as you see it doesn't give me an error and it just allows me to connect. So this way it's set up in a way that your friends can join if you have your server port forwarded. If you haven't port forwarded your server yet there will be a link in the video description to a tutorial that I have on how to port, how to port forward your server. So instead of running over there again, I'm going to quickly make myself admin. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to connect to it first and then disconnect by just typing disconnect in F1. If I then go to the server by using alt tap, it says here uh, my IP, which is my local IP, and then it says my Steam ID. So I'm going to highlight that and then do Control C to copy it. I'm going to type owner ID space and then the ID, uh, my ID. And this way, the next time I join, I will be admin. So F1 again, and then just press arrow up to go to, through the last comments that I used and go to the connect local host again and reconnect. It should say also on the server that I have authenticity level number two and that means I'm owner or admin, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to save that by doing write CFG and it says config saved. So now if you restart the server, it will still remember that you are admin. Otherwise, every time when you restart the server, it will forget that you are admin or owner. And you will have to re-add yourself as a, uh, a owner. Okay, so we're in. I'm going to type uh, no clip in F1. And this way I can fly. And with shift I can fly faster. So we are admin. And also if you press F1 and click on items in the top left. We can click on anything and it will give us that item. So it's set up. And it's running. It's working. So that concludes this tutorial on how to run your map on your server to test it. Or once you're done how to run it. In the next video, we're going to be looking at custom caves or custom areas under the terrain. So hopefully, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this beginners to advanced Rust edit course. There will be a link in the description to the playlist that has all the videos that are currently in the playlist available. And if I helped you out in any way, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm out. Peace.